Hello everyone, welcome to this week's webinar. I'm here with Brendan Cooper. We're at Tiffany Green's Golf Club in Kansas City, Missouri. And as always, we're brought to you by KickX Golf and Medicus Golf. This week's webinar was our five best tips. Now we have some that we're keeping under the covers. Those are those would be called the five greatest tips, but these are the five best tips. If you have any questions, just put them in the sidebar over there. We'll get you to that at the end. So we're going to start off. We're going to give you some of the tips that we use a lot, uh, and we use them because they work. Yeah. So if you're using something and it works for more than one player, it's a pretty good drill. If it works for one player, it's still a good drill if it works for that player. Yeah. Right. So why don't you start off, Coop? All right. Now we didn't divulge of, of what we I was going to say or what he was going to say, so we're going to see if whoever steals the other one here. Uh, <laughs> but the first one that I'm going to grab is. I've got a wedge here, and I've taken an alignment rod, and I've stuck it in the end of the grip. Um, and what this is going to help you do, it's going to help because we see so many times people coming in and really trying to throw the club head at the ball instead of really focusing on what the hand should be doing. So if you can take an alignment rod and just stick it down the end of your grip, it, it won't hurt the grip or anything. And then set up for a little chip shot. So if you get in your little chipping motion, you'll see that this rod's already running up my left rib cage here. And just practice hitting little chip shots where you go a couple feet back and a couple feet through, and I'm not going to let this rod hit me on the side. If I'm getting some love taps in the side, well, I'm going to feel that, and eventually, hopefully, I'm going to learn not to do that. Right. So, again, that's, that's to help us learn not to come in the impact looking this way. It's more or less providing that structure and keeping that shaft in line with our lead forearm right here. Right. Good. Good Okay, the other one we use when we get a new player, we're, we they don't know they might be a fader of the golf ball, and they say, "Well, I want to, I want to draw it." So we give this little test. We call this their their golf DNA. We will set a shaft in the ground, uh, 12, 15 feet in front of them, and then we have them set up to a golf ball on, on the same line, set up square to it. All we want them to do is we're going to have them try to get 10 shots that start to the right of it and then 10 shots that start to the left of it. So you don't have to make big swings to do this. We have them make full swings, but you could do this at home with just short swings. So if I want to start this ball to the right of it, then my face will be pointed to the right. So I'll make a, a somewhat swing. There it is to the right. And these are foam golf balls, by the way. And then I want to get this one to go start to the left. So again, from a square stance, I'm going to point the face a little bit left make my swing, and hopefully get the ball going over to the left. So again, that will tell me that I have the face just a touch open, so I'm going to swing just a little bit harder than what I'm doing right now. There we go, that's more. But these foam balls, again, what you're trying to get it to do is start to the right or start to the left. After you get those 10 shots, you want to look and see how many out of those 10, which one had the greatest number of 10, and then that's their kind of DNA shot. So then you just work on trying to minimize the curve. Yep. So my turn. Go ahead. My turn. Ooh, any mini miny mo. All right. So this is kind of fun, you know. Yeah. So, so this particular drill is uh, kind of to help us a little bit with the sweet spot path of the golf club plane line. Um, again. If you haven't noticed, I kind of like alignment rods. We, we use them day in and day out. But if you take an alignment rod and if that's the ball, let me back it up here a little bit so you can see. Take an alignment rod and stick it in the ground on the target line, kind of at an angle just like this. So the ball is right underneath this rod right here. So this is for a player, again, that will go up to the top and then on the start of their downswing, they'll use all upper body working out this way. Well, if I've got that rod above my target line like this, well, I'm literally going to hit that rod with the club head. So what you're trying to do is you're trying to hit the ball, dodge the rod. And that's for the player that gets up here at the top and constantly goes this direction with the shaft. That's another good one. So a dodge rod. Dodge rod. There you go. If kind you of like can, a dodge ball. If you can dodge a rod, you can play golf. <laughs> <laughs> The next one is for players that have a sense of they don't know how to move their weight back and forth. So this is good. This is, this is from the old Wild Bill Melhorn drill. 
What happens when you swing the club back, pick your left foot up, put your left foot down to start, and then pick your right foot up. So left foot up, right foot up, left foot up, right foot up. And that gives you a sense of how your pressure moves back and forth. I was just putting the ball on a small tee and doing the same drill. You pick it up, put it down, pick it up. Left up, right up. So the left's going up as you're swinging back, the left goes back down, and the right comes out post him down. Get a feel of how the pressure moves back and forth between the feet. Yeah. And that's real good, especially for the little kids. Because, yeah. you know, kids, uh, when they're little itty bitty, they really want to go this direction. <laughs> and it's really good for, you know, players that have been playing a long time that still can't break 100. Yeah. Because they're always following back and flipping. Yeah. Yeah. Your turn. All right. Well, we haven't stolen one yet, have yeah, we? Yeah, not yet. All right. So, all right. You can find you a real cheap noodle. I think we did this one on the uh, play with your noodle segment. Okay. If you take a noodle, just slide it over the end of your grip and just let it fall down here to the end of the golf club here. So if I had a ball, steal this one again. So now if I get set, you can see the noodle's obviously down by the club head. Now I'm going to make just a small swing back. I'm not going to go all the way back. I'm just going to go about halfway back. And I'm going to let that noodle drop. So now I'm going to come down slow, and I'm going to feel that noodle dropping right when that club head gets down to the ball. So if that noodle drops quickly, so if I can let it drop and it goes quickly, you can see how that club head's really trying to pass right here. Yeah. The sensation that players get when they do this, and we, we start lengthening the swing out, is they feel like they're taking this noodle and they're shooting it off in front of the ball which that's the feel right. in order to compress the ball the way that we're trying to. So right. let, let a little noodle kind of be your guide here a little bit. There we go. How to play with your noodle. There you go. Okay. There you go. All right, so now to, well, let's talk about learning club face control. For this, you just need a racket. Tennis racket or a badminton racket. Think about this racket as being your club face. So as I swing this back, I, I can look at waist high. And if you see the face straight up and down like this, or leaning backwards, then your face is going to be open. That's going to require, especially when you come in the downswing, it's going to require a lot of this wrist motion going like this, which is what we don't want to do. So we want to feel like when you take this back that the, that the face is slightly tilted down. And it go, as it goes to the top, it would still be in that attitude. So as you come down, it's right here. you got to remember, if you, go, if you take it back right here, and then you open it up coming down, when you come, or it's the top, and you come down, it's actually leaning backwards. There are players that take it up and have this face open, and then they just rotate the face downward, a la Hogan, Trevino, Tom Lehman. The easier way to do that is just feel, we call it club face looking at the ball. Keep the club face looking at the ball longer so when you get down to your delivery right here, the face is looking down. Now all you get to do is turn it, bring the face back to the ball and you just exit out of it. But learn how to control the club face through your hands and use a racket because you can see this a lot easier than you can a club yeah. face. Yeah, that's a great drill. All right, I'm gonna, I'm gonna get him here. I'm gonna steal one, I know it. I know it. <laughs> I know it. Is this your next one? Nope. Oh. I'm letting you have all the fun. Oh, okay. <laughs> all right, ropes. Now, if you've watched by the last two months, it seems like we've, been, we've shown this or, or talked about it, but if, if you get a rope that's, oh, about an inch in diameter, roughly seven to eight feet long, then get you that and kind of wad it up here at the top and put your grip on it. Do your normal setup to where the rope's just barely touching the ground. So you want to picture you're swinging a five or a six iron here. Now from here, just turn your, turn your body, go to the top, let the rope get on your shoulders, and now practice swinging the rope. And what this will do is, is in order for me to get this rope to swing with any kind of speed where it's making the sound, I've got to start everything. You can kind of see I get lower body going, initiating, and then I've got to swing my hands and my arms to get that thing to make a sound. So, yeah. you know, this is a great drill that we do a lot. You know, a lot. You know, if you're a player that's that's got a lot of tension in your arms and hands, this is a great drill to kind of free that up some, and it's a great drill to get things sequenced, you know, as far as what the body and the arms need to do. 
All right, now we're going to work on what's called an impact drill. And what we want to do is, is uh, lay a rod down. Again, we'll just lay a dowel rod down. And then place your golf ball. I don't know if you guys can see that or not. Let me move it this way. There you can see it now. And then place the back side of your golf ball even with the dowel rod, the end of the dowel rod. So now the object in this is first do it without a club and see if you can strike the ground at or in front of that dowel rod. Then set it up, make sure you don't hit the rod itself. Set it up, take a swing, swing down, and you're going to see where your club hit the ground. So it should hit the ground at the rod or slightly in front of the rod. So as you do this, you'll figure it out. You go, what do I have to do to do that? Well, if I want the shaft more forward leaning, I'd have my body more forward, my hands more forward. I would be leaning back. So you just, again, take it up. and You don't have to make a full swing. Just make a big swing. And then see where the club is striking the ground. Okay? Piece of cake. You, you semi-stole one. <laughs> <laughs> well, you got one more. I know. You, know you got a semi-stole one, so I'm going to dig down in my bag here. Um, a good drill to do outside, and hopefully it's a sunny day. You know, we talk about steady head quite a bit, and, and well, not quite a bit, quite a, quite a lot, actually. But use your shadow kind of as a guide to help you with your head some. You know, if, if you can find where your shadow is, and like I said, hopefully it's somewhat sunny, then turn and face your shadow and get set, and then just look at where your head is. Now, practice making swings back and forth nice and slow, and watch what your head does. Right. You know, I mean, that's uh, very effective. I mean, just the other day, had a young player that had a real bad tendency of going this way. Right. He couldn't feel it, but then when I had him turn around and face the shadow, he was like, "Holy cow!" Yeah. So use your shadow to kind of see what's going on with your head there. Right. Which ties into a lot of drills we've done over the last year or so, which is you know we've done a lot of steady head drills with the head on the wall. Mm -hmm. You know, holding the shaft by the head. I mean, a lot of this all ties in together. Yeah. So, now we're going to save the greatest stuff. I think we'll make it a, a Christmas gift to real quick. But uh, we're going to check on our on our uh, questions now. We've got a lot of them I can see already. All right, so the first question is from, uh, is from Bill. How do you hit the ball higher? Take it away, Coop. Well, one... I would check, you know, let's assume that you're, you're talking, we'll assume everything in the bag, irons and, and driver. Uh, one, I would check ball position. Make sure that you don't have the ball too far, position too far back in your stance. Make sure that we've got it where it should be, you know, with, with shorter irons. You know, we're going to be more middle-ish to the driver. Make sure the driver's up here off the lead shoulder. That would be the first thing I would check. The next thing I would check is just also make sure that we're not having a tendency to let the head, or buttons, get slide forward like this on the downswing. Okay, so you can see as I start to slide forward, my head's going forward. Well, that's going to kind of want to be lofted a little bit. Right, because so, it effectively moves the ball back. Yeah, so I would make sure, one, check your ball position. Two, make sure that we're keeping that head pretty stable and more in the center and not letting it float forward a little bit. All right. All right. Thanks, Bill. Let's see what our next question is. And this one is from John. What drill can I do to keep me from hanging back on my shots? Well, fortunately for you, John, we just did that drill. Wow. And wow. a lot of Bill Melhorn yeah. drill. Right, so a lot of Bill Melhorn was a tour player back in the 40s, and Ben Hogan thought he was the best ball striker he'd ever seen. And that's saying something for Yeah. Me. So, so again, when you take it back, pick your front foot up, put the front foot down, swing the club, bring the back foot up. So it's up, down, up. So if you do this, you're going to get a feeling of how your body works. Now put the feet flat and get the same feel, just like you would a normal stance. Right? So what I feel now is all the pressure going on my back foot and all the pressure going on my front foot. Yep. Learn how to do this. Learn how to do that wild bell melhorn drill first, then put the feet in normal position, get that same feel. Yep. Yep. All right, next question. This one is from Bob. What, in your opinion, is the most effective swing aid trainer on the market? Well, 
There are lots of them, and it depends on which part of swing you're working on. So if you're working on uh, your swing path, then I would recommend a, a Vision Track Pro because mm -hmm. it will show you the path the club head sweet spot should be swinging on. Yeah. And if you miss that path, it has a little travel arm that you can hit, and then that will show you that it's actually off the path. Yeah. Uh, if you are, if you have, a, if you are looking for something to keep you a little more connected, then I would check out these little connection pads that actually strip, attach to your belt. Pull up, pull up and go underneath your arms, you know, to bend over and pick them up. This will keep your arms more connected, and that is uh, the Medica Swing Connector. Mm -hmm. can do that. Of course, you know, we we promote Medicus because we think they have the best training aids on the market. Yeah. So there are a lot of good training aids there. And if you go to uh, uh, Medicus.com or you go to uh, uh, KickXGolf.com, you see a list of training aids. You can pull those down, and I'll tell you exactly what it's for. Yeah. Do you have some favorites you like? No, uh, I, I really like the, uh, <coughs> the Crush It. Uh, I use the Crush It a lot. Um, you know, it's a it's a little half that looks like a styrofoam ball that's cut in half, and it's orange. Rubber, and, actually. Okay, rubber. <laughs> <laughs> so, and you just put it right under your front foot, and what you do with it is. When you go from the top of your, your backswing here and start down, you feel like you're literally crushing. So, hence the reason for the word crush it. So, you know, it's a great way to get that weight started forward. Here we go, coming in. Special blue. So, um, use that. There it is right there. You get back. And now I'm going to feel like I'm just going to crush it and literally push it downward. So, that's going to set the weight and the pressure forward. Right. And, and the one we're talking about where the pads go into your arms. It's actually called the core links, Medicus core links, and that will that will keep your uh, your arms more attached to your upper body as you're going back and forth. Mm -hmm. So let's see our next one. Oh, and Denny Laws, one of our members, just brought me in some of my famous and special barbecue sauce, all the way from Sneed's Barbecue. Okay, so Jamie, what is the simplest way to hit a draw with your driver? Wow. Well, like we talked before, first thing you need to figure out is if that draw is the easiest thing for you to hit or not. Yep. If it's hard, really hard to hit a particular shot, I'd stay away from that shot. Yeah. I mean, okay. think of think of players like Tom Lehman, Bruce Liskey back in the day. Tom Lehman, uh, a fade or a fade for him was a straight ball. Right. You know, I mean, he had, everything he hit was a draw, and he knew which holes he could go after, which ones he didn't. Liskey, on the other hand, hit a massive fade. So. Right. You know, those guys knew which shots worked for them and not. So and, and and you know, everybody thinks that the world's best players can hit any shot on the planet, but there was a video of not long ago of Lee Westwood on the range and the uh, the, the person asking the question saying, Well if you had to hit a draw, how would you hit it? So Lee set up to hit a draw, faded. Set up to hit a draw again, faded. Okay, so here's here's one of the best players in the world. His shot is not a draw. Yeah. So even when he's trying to hit one, it's really difficult. Yeah, yeah exactly. You know, and the players that that can't hit the draw or can't hit the fade, when they try to do it, it turns into either a big, big, big time miss or yeah. you know overdraw. So you know, it, it's it's something where, like Chuck's saying, if you struggle with it, you got to understand that we've got to have a difference of the face and the path. Right. But if you can't do like your DNA test here and it doesn't work out to that, I'm not sure I would really try to mess with it too yeah, much. But, but if you wanted to hit it, you would set your body a little bit to the to the open side or to the closed side, so it's sitting to the right for us, for right-handers. You would move the ball up to your left shoulder, okay? So you're going to point to the right, you're going to move the ball up to your right shoulder so you can hit, or left shoulder so you can hit it on the upswing. So your path has to be more outward, inward to outward, with a club face that is close to that where that club head is swinging. Yeah. And that's what produces a draw. All right. So it's always the face is close to the path. Not the target line. Yeah. To the path. Yeah. All right. And the vision track will show you exactly how to do that. All right. Thanks for the question. Let's see what we got going on here. Our next question. Is from John. How do you make a proper back turn? Well, you know, again, it uh, 
we teach a free turn. We want we want our players being able to stand here and have some freedom turning. So you know, again, if if Chuck stays right where he's at there, and I'll do it without a club here. Hey, my, Brenda. Yes. Well, there, turn. There, there's your turn. Now, when I did that, I'll do it so I face the camera. Now, notice I didn't go. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So my head obviously went this way. I want to feel like my head's staying relatively steady, but I'm turning freely here. So if you stand up straight up and down this way, and I turn like that, well, that's literally all that we're doing. Is right. the only difference is, is we're doing it in a golf posture. So if I stand straight up, turn. Now if I get in my posture, that's, there's where I would be right there. So you know a lot, not a lot of movement side to side here, but it's just just it's just turning, turning freely yeah. turning back and forth. And, and you have to understand when you turn, okay, if you had a line uh, on the outside of your hip and you turn, your hip would actually work inside that line, right? Because you're turning around a center point, okay? So it's moving this way. It's not going over here. That's a that's a linear movement. So that's not even yeah. a turn. Yeah. Right? And you know, for those people that say, well, you got to get behind the ball or whatever, I mean, no, I mean, with the, with the driver, the ball's already up here, so her head's already behind. You're already behind. You don't need to set up with it already there and go this way with it. So yeah. you don't worry about trying to get the head back. I mean, it is where it is. Although, did you see the uh, picture of the guy at the long drive? Now, that I saw, and that looks like it hurt. That looks like it hurt. So this guy at the long drive, I don't even know if he made it to the finals. When he took it back, his head was clear over here, and his left foot was completely off the ground. And then he stomped down and went the other yeah, way. Yeah, I mean, it was off the ground three, four inches. Yeah, almost. yeah. Ooh, holy cow. I don't know if they made it to the finals, but it was a great picture. So it looked good. All right, so Ken, to move the ball, fade or draw, do you like changing your stance or opening and closing the club face? Well... <laughs> Again, open and closing are relative to what? So they're either open or closed to the path. Which closed to the path is a draw, open to the path is a fade. You can do that from a square stance, but you can also open it or also close it. It depends on the player, which yeah. one they need. Yeah, I mean, every, every player is different. The, the biggest thing is understanding what causes what, just like what Chuck said. Um, you know, some some players don't like to mess around with their stance. They will change the path during the swing. Other players have got to do it prior to. So it's just making sure you understand, all right, if I've got the path coming more from inside or to out, I better have that face shut to that path to get it to curve to the right or to the left. If, it, if I'm hitting a fade or I'm trying to hit a big slice, it's the exact opposite. It needs to come from out to in with a face open to that path. Open to the path. So it's either square or open to the path, mm -hmm. not relative to the target line. Square or open to the path. Yes. All right, next question. <clears throat> this one is from Bill. How not to shank your chips around the green? Bill, didn't you just send this to us like a couple of weeks ago? <laughs> I think you had the shanks in, dude. <laughs> So typically what happens when somebody is, is and I don't know if it's, a, if it's a chip or a pitch because those are two different shots, but generally what happens when you get set up is you're trying to take the club too much in this way and then go out, and when you do that, it's going to bring the hosel in the play. Yeah. So when you set up, and again, you can set this ball kind of on your back ankle, set the butt of the club either at your navel or a little forward if you want, you can go ahead and lean forward. Just keep this club face square looking there. So all you're doing is moving the sweet spot back and through. And as I move that, you'll see from this angle, that club is staying out more. It's not coming in this way. When you do that and you go back out, there's a pretty good chance you're going to hit it right here where that sweet spot's not very yeah. big. Yeah, definitely. So you want to add to that? No, that's, that's really the majority issue we see when we see players that, that kind of Instead of getting on the green, they go around the green. Yeah. You know, so yeah, exactly. you know, definitely focus on the path of that club. All right, our next question. All right, and this this one is from John. Where's the first move of the downswing, especially as it relates to the hips and shoulders? Well, again, it would be um, for, if you watched me swinging that rope a minute ago. You know, when I when I had it, and I'll tell you what, I'll just grab it again real quick. So, 
if I swing this rope back and get it on my shoulders, in order for me to get this thing going, I'm going to use, I'm going to start from the ground up. More players that we see start to swing from the top down. But in order to swing this thing right, you can see how I'm initiating the swing through my feet, my legs, and my hips, and I'm getting a little bit of a bump there, and you can see my pressure starting to shift. Now from here, I'm going to turn the, the arms loose and let them go. So that's the sequence that we need to get everything to go as far as firing sequence. So again, get you a rope and practice that because if you're doing it from the top down, you're going to go way out this way, and that rope's going to actually slap you right here in the rib cage. Yeah. Okay. So if you're doing it right, this rope will not hit you. It's going to work underneath this shoulder, your right shoulder here on the follow. -up. Right. Or if you start down with your arms first, right? Go ahead and take it up, show them your arms first. So if his body holds, and his arms I don't, I don't want to because it hits me. <laughs> That's why I'm having you do it. Thanks. So. Well, this is. That's your really arm. Yeah, and I kind of flinched on that. Yeah, that one. was not going to <laughs> All right, next question. All right, this one is from uh, Jay. The best technique for playing hard packed sand sharks. Okay, so when obviously with most bunker shots, you're trying to expose the bounce and hit it with the trailing edge. When you have a hard packed shot, kind of like hitting off hard pan, you don't want to expose the back bounce because then you'll just blade it. So just set up like you would in a normal setting. Just move the ball more forward with the club face square, a little more weight forward. Take it up almost like you're getting a small pitch shot. You'll let the leading edge come down and strike behind the ball instead of the, instead of the trailing. Yeah, and don't try to help the ball get up. Remember, right. the, the club's got loft on it. The ball will get up enough. Right. You know. Okay, well, I think that's it. So... You know, again, it's Red Friday. You know what? If, if the things keep up, you're going to be dressed in black like I am. Yeah, you know, exactly. So, so. anyway, uh, we will see you next Friday. We have a list of things that uh, that uh, you've sent in. Keep sending things in you want us to talk about, yeah. and we'll keep doing this, right? And so oh, hang on, hang on. Now, make sure you guys tune in next week, Tuesday, Wednesday. For our very own, Mr. Evans is going to be on the Golf Channel Morning Drop. So make sure you guys tune in and listen to everything he's going to talk about. And I'll be using all the Cooper's drills. Yeah, okay. I knew it. <laughs>